Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I just want to share some goodies. Listen, we know we're in the last days. We're looking at the signs of the times. And a friend of mine and I just got through having a conversation. And I want her to share what she said. It was golden. And you need to hear this. Because for those of you born again Christians who have unsaved friends or friends that are straddled in the fence or living a lukewarm lifestyle or living in sin, whatever the case may be. If you can't speak up now, mm, God help you for later on. Thank you so much for joining me, Andrea. I really appreciate this. And I ask yeah. you to please share, share, share what we were just talking about. You know, recently I've been I've been reading my Bible a lot, and I was reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, mm -hmm. and I just felt really convicted in my spirit that, you know, the times are, you know, we're in the end times right now. I mean, even at the door, and that we're gonna have to make some choices. There's no more lukewarm Christianity like the separating of the goats and the sheep are happening now. Right. And, and it's gonna get more intense. And you know, I, I just got to this point where I realized, you know, this is, we're, we're in peace times right now, and if you can't stand up for the truth right now, you can't, you're not going to be able to do it when the war happens. That's your right. store is going to be dull because you haven't read your Bible in weeks or years. You, you, you just will not be equipped, and you will not make it. You will have missed your chance. And mm. so we have to be bold now. Yes. We have, we have to face being uncomfortable with our friends and our coworkers because that's just friendship that you might lose or a job. Imagine a gun to the back of your head and you're and you're staring your family down and you gotta make a choice. Are you gonna are you gonna be bold so that you can go home and that they'll see your courage and, and make the right choice too? Or are you gonna duck out? It's, it's really serious and it's way bigger than just us. Right. Um, I, I had a dream one time too. I was in a stadium full of people and they were, they were, they had Christians lined up and they were like, if you don't agree with us, we're going to shoot you. Look at that. And I was the first one. I remember I was the first one that came up. And I remember thinking, this isn't even about me right now. This is not about me. I'm like, if I duck down, the next person might duck down. Right. The next person. And I'm like, and this is this is the determining factor. Is if I don't do it, I'm getting the mark of the beast. Woo! You know what I'm saying? And and I and I said, you know what? I got to do this. And it's not even for me. It's for my it's for my kin. It's for my yes. the body of Christ right now. Yes. We are at enmity with the world. And if you don't make a choice, you're not going to make it. Woo! You, you got that out. right, girl. Listen, there are so many people who are trying to be politically correct. They want to be socially diplomatic and acceptable and accepted. And they want to be people pleasers. So if a person says, do you think my gay lifestyle is wrong? And you're sitting there like, oh, I don't want to offend. Oh, they might get mad at me. Well, guess what? What are you going to do when the gun is aiming right at your forehead saying yes or no? And you're like, uh, uh. Uh, well, if you can't stand up to a little conversation, how are you going to stand up to a gun? You gotta, we got to make a choice, and, and it starts small. Yes. It starts small. When, when someone is mentioning something and you are right there, stand up. Yes. When you have the opportunity, stand up and say what you have to say. Right. It starts small, but you will build and courage and you will not fold, even if it's your own mother in your face, you will not fold and you will know, I did not say something hateful like they are calling me a bigot, a hateful person, a homophobe. I said the truth. Right. And you'll know it and you will be able to go to bed at night. Ah. Uh. Even if everybody hates you because you know you said it in love and you said the truth. That's all we have to do. Other than that, we do not have to cater to people's emotions. Right. Oh, you said it. Them. You don't have to cater to people's emotions. That was so rich, I had to repeat it. Yeah, because uh, you, <laughs> you're going to wish you didn't if you end up in, in hell. You're going to be like, wow, I 
chose people's emotions over my God. Right. He's a jealous God. You must choose him, not your friend. Right. Right. You have to be willing to live lonely and alone and know that God will reward you. You don't have to wait to go to the to the sweet by and by to get your reward. Let me tell you guys, I have obeyed till it hurt, till it made me cry. I have cried battling with, Lord, Lord I don't want to do it this way. But knowing it was his way, I did it. And let me tell you what was on the other side of that choice. His presence, his smile, right all over me. I could just... I could see his facial expression without seeing his face. Oh, beautiful how God rewards you for obedience. Exactly. You, you, when you please God, the, the, the person who created us, it, it feels so much better than the superficial right. applause of people. That they will applaud you and love you one moment and then send you to the cross to die the next. That's right. Love you one minute, crucify you the next. That's right. That's that right. People. people are fickle. God won't do that. Right. That people are fickle. That's right. Girl, thank you so much for sharing. We're going to come back and finish this subject up because folks have a short attention span. So we're going to give them a little potty moment so they can go run to the to the little, uh, yeah. Okay, we'll be right back while you go tinkle, you guys. 